As for thinking you could fool a geologist into believing that a common meteorite is actually a moon rock, simply because it shows signs of radiation, think again. Remember what Dr. Hartman said about oxygen isotope ratios? When we got the rocks back from the moon, we saw that the um, isotopes of oxygen in the lunar rocks were exactly the same as on the Earth. Now the reason this is important is that we have meteorites from other parts of the solar system and each other part of the solar system has a different composition of these oxygen isotopes, ratio of one type of isotope to the other. Jera plays this interview at least two or three times in a series and yet he fails to pick up on the fact that meteorites from other parts of the solar system have different oxygen isotope ratios from Earth rocks and Moon rocks. Of all the thousands of meteorites that have been discovered on Earth, only a small handful, those believed to have come from the Moon, have oxygen isotope ratios similar to Earth rocks and NASA's Moon rocks. The vast majority of meteorites have different oxygen isotope ratios. This totally rules out the possibility that NASA could have passed off common meteorites as Moon rocks. Then it's a good thing I never said NASA tried to pass off plain old meteorites alone as moon rocks, isn't it? I specifically said the samples were a man-made combination of earth rocks and meteorites. As far as your claim that the oxygen isotopes from other parts of the solar system would be a dead giveaway, I'm sure it would be if the only ingredient used in NASA's Apollo samples were raw chondrites, like the ones you highlight in your video. But I never said that chondrites were the class of meteorites used, did I? No, I didn't. For that matter, I never said chondrites were anything like NASA's Apollo samples. Nor did I say that raw meteorites alone were used. Webb focuses heavily on chondrites throughout his entire critique series. You'd think that chondrites were the only meteorites known to man. But there are many other types of non-lunar meteorites. And, contrary to what Webb claims, there are ordinary meteorites with, as he put it, similar oxygen isotopes to NASA's Apollo samples and Earth rocks. To be perfectly frank, I doubt Webb even has the slightest clue what he's talking about when he boldly flashes those diagrams on screen and proclaims that all meteorites have different oxygen isotope ratios to the Apollo samples and Earth rocks. He does not even give us the numbers for these ratios and instead waves his arms around flashing diagrams on screen that are not even consistent with one another. Before we get into that, remember that 1970 paper that Webb showed us regarding lunar water? Had he just flipped two pages back, he might have come across this other article published in the same journal by Onuma, Clayton, and Mayida of the University of Chicago. These men specifically analyzed the pyroxene in the Apollo samples and compared them to those of earth rocks and a variety of meteorites. Their opening statement says, in plain English, The oxygen 18 values are plagioclase 6.20, Clinopyroxene 5.75, Ilmenite 4.45, parts per thousand relative to the standard mean ocean water. The isotopic distribution corresponds to equilibrium at 1120 degrees Celsius. The isotope composition of lunar pyroxenes falls within the range for pyroxenes of terrestrial mafic and ultramafic rocks, ordinary chondrites, enstatite chondrites, and enstatite achondrites but above the ranges for basaltic achondrites, hypersthene achondrites, and mesosiderites. This one statement alone disqualifies everything Webb said about meteorites officially identified as being of lunar origin being the only meteorites with oxygen isotope ratios similar to Earth rocks and NASA's Apollo samples. Being fair, carbonaceous chondrites do have oxygen isotope ratios vastly different to that of Apollo samples. Chondrite NWA801, for example, has an oxygen 18 and oxygen 17 ratio of about 27 to 12 per mil. But still, Webb ignored its ordinary brothers. Ordinary chondrites do have similar oxygen isotope ratios to the Apollo samples. Carbonaceous ones, like NWA801, do not. 
It could also be questioned on just how dissimilar the oxygen isotope ratios of basaltic achondrites, such as HED meteorites, are to the Apollo samples. In his two videos on this subject, Webb shows us two completely different charts that plot oxygen isotope ratios. This one, and this one. Before we begin, I'll enlighten those who don't understand how to read it. The x-axis represents oxygen 18 per mil, or parts per thousand. And the y-axis represents oxygen 17 per mil. The higher up on the chart, the more oxygen 17 the rock has. The closer to the right of the chart, the more oxygen 18 it has. The dotted line represents the terrestrial fractionation line. In other words, anything along this line has oxygen 17 and 18 ratios that are commensurate to those of Earth. What I find curious about this diagram is that the rocks from the Moon are represented as a tiny blob inside the terrestrial fractionation line implying that the lunar oxygen isotopes are confined to this tiny isolated class, with an oxygen 18 content of around 5 to 6 per mil, and oxygen 17 between 2 to 3 per mil. Yet, this other chart that Webb shows attributes the lunar oxygen isotope ratios to the entire length of the terrestrial fractionation line, thus broadening the class for the lunar oxygen isotopes which puts them between 2.5 and 7.5 per mil for oxygen 18 and 1.3 to 4 per mil for oxygen 17. Webb blindly puts these two different charts in the same video, but offers no reconciliation. Any competent researcher would apply their own scientific and technical judgement when their multitude of source material appears contradictory, and that Webb did not do. So allow me. According to this graph, the lunar oxygen isotopes are plotted entirely along the terrestrial fractionation line. If we look back to this graph and assume that the lunar oxygen isotopes are plotted completely along the length of the TFL, as the previous chart indicated, we find that there are many classes of meteorites that run near parallel to the TFL, some of which actually cross over the TFL, such as the HED group, which fall on the graph as having oxygen 18 to oxygen 17 ratios within the ranges of 3 to 1 per mil to 4 to 2 per mil, which fall within the range for earth rocks and moon rocks as illustrated by the previous graph. In fact, looking at this diagram, which specifically compares earth rocks and moon rocks to Mars meteorites and HED meteorites, we find examples of HED meteorites that exactly cross over the TFL. And yet, Webb claims the only meteorites with oxygen isotopes in any way similar to Earth rocks are those officially classed as being of lunar origin. Of all the thousands of meteorites that have been discovered on Earth, only a small handful, those believed to have come from the Moon, have oxygen isotope ratios similar to Earth rocks and NASA's moon rocks. Yet his own diagrams indicate otherwise. Now, this diagram doesn't give names of any HED meteorites, but we have known examples on record. Meteorite Darel Gani 872, or DAG 872 for short, was originally suspected to be a lunar meteorite because when it was analysed, they found that its oxygen isotope ratios were exactly the same as the Apollo samples and terrestrial rocks. But this rock turned out to be nothing more than a HED meteorite. The aforementioned Robert Clayford, who in 1970 declared lunar rocks to be distinctly richer in oxygen 18 than basaltic achondrites, later ate his words when he stated, Analysis of DAG 872 gives oxygen 18 value of 5.34 and oxygen 17 value of 2.65. This result is consistent with a lunar origin. The University of Arizona attributed this distinctly lunar oxygen isotope signature to being the result of terrestrial contamination, that exposure to the atmosphere changed its ratios to those of the Earth-Moon system. But not all scientists are convinced. As such, 
There is still debate over whether DAG-872 is a lunar meteorite, a HED meteorite, or a completely new achondrite altogether. Quite frankly, I'm not surprised why so many people suspected that DAG-872 was a lunar meteorite. As you'll see later on, HED meteorites and Apollo samples are not as different as Webb makes them out to be. We'll talk more on HED meteorites later.